Hey guys, welcome back. So this video is about the GPU power delivery. Uh, I will talk about what this is, what it does, and this hopefully helps everyone who tries to repair their own GPU. I'll also give you some examples of packages so you can identify and also understand your GPU power delivery and that hopefully better diagnose the fault. So what is the GPU power delivery? Well, it is essentially a DC to DC converter and a buck converter at that, which means we have a higher voltage. In our case, in, when we're talking about computers, we have the 12 volt going to the GPU and we have to well lower this voltage to maybe between 0.6 to 1 point something volts, depending on the GPU generation and also its current power state. And uh, as I mentioned, we use something that is called a buck converter. I will quickly show you the buck converter circuit that we're dealing with. So we have our input plus 12 volt over here. Then we have our first MOSFET. This is essentially our switch, so whenever you see on the internet uh, buck converter circuits and there's a simple switch, uh, something like uh, yeah, this, then they're talking about either a MOSFET or a uh, transistor, but typically we use MOSFETs as they are uh, better in high power situations. Uh, so we have our uh, MOSFET over here. Let me just quickly get rid of this one. This is our Q1 MOSFET. We have our drain, source and gate. This one then goes into an inductor. This is our inductor L1. And we have our output voltage, whatever this voltage is. And then obviously we have parallel to that, we have our ground. Ground is a direct uh, short to whatever we this power rail is dedicated for either if it's the GPU or the memory. And then in a typical circuit you would see a simple diode and this polarity going from ground to our positive voltage rail. But a um, GPU or its power delivery is not a simple buck converter but it's a so-called synchronous buck converter. And for that we have another MOSFET. Is this the right way around? Yes it is. We have another MOSFET instead of a single diode. We have gate, we have source and we have drain. The reason we have another MOSFET instead of a diode in here is because a MOSFET when it conducts has a much lower um, power wasted across it than a diode has. Diodes have or can have quite high voltage drops. Now a standard um, buck converter circuit would use something like a short key diode. They already have a very 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 low voltage drop across but still waste the most power in the whole circuit. And this uh, configuration over here, again, we, is called a synchronous buck converter because we have to switch these two MOSFETs according to the current state of operation of the whole circuit. And the circuit has essentially two states. Uh, the first state is where we have current flowing this direction. We have this one active over here, so we have our, uh, well, positive rail completely active and our ground. And uh, then we have our off state, which is where we only have this part of the circuit conductive and we have current flow this way around. So when our Q1, and, uh, this is by the way Q2, when our Q1 or our MOSFET 1 is switched on, the inductor L1 uh, builds up a magnetic field. We do not have a, a direct pass through of a current through an inductor, first a magnetic field builds up before it's completely saturated and would actually give you 12 volt on its output. We switch off Q1 and switch on Q2. In this state, in the second power state, the magnetic field that builds up in our inductor would collapse and G stored would be released and the 
inductors polarity would uh, switch around. And uh, yeah, obviously our MOSFET Q2 has to be opened to actually close the circuit. Now, here's something important about this kind of a circuit. I'll include it. It's not important for just fixing your GPU, but I'll mention it anyway. The reason the MOSFET is uh, in this direction is because it's internal diode. Yes, the MOSFET has an internal diode. Uh, I'll simply uh, do it like this. So this is our MOSFET. This is the same direction as this one. We have gate, source, drain has another internal diode in this direction. This is the a direction that you would also see a diode be in if this was a simple buck converter circuit using a diode. But it's not what you may think. The reason the MOSFET is this way around is for the simple reason that these two MOSFETs cannot be active at the same time. And to prevent a uh, simultaneous cross uh, conduction we have something that is called a break before make um, switching scheme which essentially means if this one switches off we have a very 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 small delay before this one switches on however in this time we already have to have this circuit closed hence we have the MOSFET uh, in this way from uh, source to ground drain to our positive rail so that the internal diode can actually conduct the current in the time before it actually switches on. And here's why it's called a synchronous back converter. If we take a look at a graph, we have our voltage that we do apply to the MOSFET gate to open it, and then we have our time, so we have our voltage to gate, our time frame. Let's say we're switching with a 50% duty cycle. In the time, where we are in on state, this one has to switch on, so we apply a high... Um, let me just quickly do it like this. So when we are in on state, this one switches on, we apply a high, volt, uh, a high signal, whatever voltage this may require. And in this time, obviously we have a low signal or low voltage signal, typically ground, uh, applied to the second MOSFET over here. And then when we switch this one off, so we switch this one off, we switch this one on with a very, very small delay. I'll indicate it like with this. And this is approximately our 50% duty cycle. We are constantly switching between this one closing the circuit and this one closing the circuit, but if this one closes the circuit, this one has to open it. If this one cl opens the circuit, this one has to close the circuit. So this is the reason they are called synchronous buck converters. Uh, they have a constant switch and they are synchronized in this manner. So the reason I gave you this explanation is to hopefully explain how the power delivery on a GPU works. Now obviously all of these MOSFETs and you uh, have to also note that um, we sometimes double MOSFETs. So we have, for example, on the GTX 970, this MOSFET over here, the Q1, we have two in parallel, whereas this one is only a single one. The whole thing over here is called a single power rail, and all of the MOSFETs are then connected to a MOSFET driver. The MOSFET driver itself is really where the magic happens. The MOSFET driver simply gets uh, the switching signal for our Q1 MOSFET or MOSFETs if we have multiple in parallel and it then doubles down on the signal for our MOSFET Q2. So this is uh, where we have this uh, synchronous conversion from a single switching signal to these two switching signals. Now that doesn't mean that a controller can do that. Uh, there are controllers out there that do that but in the case of my GTX 170, it's actually the MOSFET driver that uh, converts a single switching signal uh, to the both required switching signal for the synchronous bug converter that we see over here. Now this is all the theory that I'm going to include in this video, it's just a basic overview of it and next off we will take a look about a few packages, uh, different component packages for the MOSFETs 
uh, the inductor, muscle driver, and the control IC. So I'll show you a few packages and then also the power delivery on a few different GPUs that I have. And that hopefully also helps you if you're completely new to this kind of stuff to properly identify the power delivery. As mentioned in the beginning, not everyone needs this kind of aid where I show the power delivery of different GPUs as well as some of the used package types. However, I still want to offer this help, which is especially useful for someone who never dealt with this stuff and wants to get into fixing GPUs. Therefore, I will make a separate video only dedicated to this. For now, I hope you liked the video and if you did, please leave a like, comment down below and other than that, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!